the designers have to be open in the future uh, for the process of the change of the society as well we have to come in close relation to the change of the society that means we have uh, to think about technology in the society but as well we have to think about in which way the designers can change the society um, in the end this is a little bit something what maybe the politicians have to do but uh, I think we have to take over a little bit the field of the politicians and uh, to try to make this world a little better than uh, we did it before and uh, enjoyable, more enjoyable maybe and also more safe. There are some um, needs for the developing. So first of all the designers in the process of design we have to understand the needs of the people and the needs of the society. Uh, but the most important part of the society every time the people as well. It would make more sense to create a society without of people. Sometimes it's possible, but the uh, thing is not to enjoy the life anymore. And uh, so we have to discover the needs, uh, what kind of problems the people have in the place where they're living. For example, in the, in the, on the countryside in Japan, uh, what is the problem in the age? What could be the problem in the age? Uh, Luckily, we have maybe some people here now in this workshop They have the age we can talk about. We not uh, have uh, ourselves, but uh, I think it's very important to understand this kind of needs, and for this as well, we have to include this kind of people in the design process. It means um, we have to find out in which way we, as the designers, as professional designers, can work together with people we like to develop um, products, we like to develop answers or questions. For this we need um, a new communication. That means, uh, especially in universities, we have to learn the different languages of the society. Um, we cannot talk uh, in the design language or architecture language. We have to talk in different languages to understand and come close to the people that have some needs. Based on the um, description of the needs, uh, we can of course form then maybe a process uh, in which way we will give answers later. But carefully, because uh, in this kind of developing process, we need maybe time to really to understand and to find answers. So first the needs are important, the concepts are important then. Um, then we have to realize uh, this kind of answers. We have to give some pictures to the people to get the feedback that we understood in the right way. As well, we have to get some pictures um, or the prototypes, name it, um, that we can communicate with some uh, people in this kind of process. So our drawings, what the design did before, is a part of the communication. Um, but. Um, don't be afraid, you know, we don't need this kind of super drawings what uh, maybe the car industry did before. Uh, we need just drawings to communicate. We need a prototype to communicate, to understand the problem, but as well to be able to communicate with uh, people that are involved in the process and of course with the colleagues in the teams. So to build a prototype is first of all for communication, not to show up. It's not a showcase, it's a communication. We have to understand as well, what we say here, market research, we have to understand the field where the problem maybe is discovered. What is around this kind of uh, field where maybe needs are necessary. Um, so we have to understand uh, what is uh, in relation to this kind of problem. And it's get kind of, kind of, it's could uh, get very complicated because it's become very complex. So we have to look around this kind of needs and the kind of problems, what maybe will interfere this kind of um, developing process as well, what could be interfere maybe this kind of product or services, what we have to develop together. Um, the product environment, what I talked before, it's very important where the product is placed, um, who could use the product, um, uh, which age maybe could be from young to old, 
could be maybe disabled people, could be maybe elderly people, could be everybody, what we name universal design, what other countries name uh, design for all. Anyway, is the issue for the future. Uh, I don't know why design changed so much in this kind of target groups. Uh, because I think it was a mistake that design focused on target groups. Um, I think design has to focus on all people in the future. We have not so much energy to develop products and to provide products for each target group. In the future, we have to have uh, to develop products and services and this kind of designs, what is um, support a lot of people in the society, not only just the target, except maybe disabled people. They need a special support. And, um, but in general, all the products, all the services has to be usable for young people and old people. And not special products only for old people, not special products only for young people. There are some products on the, in the world already that do this quite well, but in general we have still this kind of focusing on special groups of the society. I personally believe that is a mistake. And uh, I think the future, if you see the growth of the population of the Earth, then we are not able anymore to focus on target groups. We have to focus on people in general, and we have to support the people to survive on this Earth. Of course, all the products what we developed, as we have to rethink as well this kind of recycling process, is this a real product? But also services. Services can create, but services can also disappear. So we have to think about what will be with a service, what will disappear maybe. Can we use the service in another way, for example? If you write a letter, for example, um, not a love letter, but a general letter, then um, you have to think about maybe you can use the letter twice, three times. Because if you carefully de develop a letter, you create a letter, and you send an email to some people important and uh, keep the email because maybe you can use this kind of recycled process. And um, so this kind of design thinking we have to include in our whole life and the recycling. Collecting information about that now we have a kind of target group because in this kind of process we like to think about people and the countryside in Japan and best age. We say best age for this, not older people. <laughs> I belong to this group already, so I like this kind of word, best age. And um, so we have to, the people will come, I think, they will show up quite soon. And of course, we have to ask them, what is the problem of them? And we have to involve this kind of people in our groups, in our process, developing process, to find out really what could help to stay longer on countryside, what could help maybe to bring young people back to the countryside. Um, what kind of services, what kind of products are necessary um, and helpful that the people can enjoy, enjoy as well the life on the countryside. Why everybody likes to move downtown Tokyo? Uh, what is the problem of, of mega cities of today? Maybe we have to communicate the problem of the mega cities to keep people on the countryside. Because everybody has this kind of bright picture from cities, you know, cities, young people running around, discos, and so on and so on. But uh, how often do you go in disco, you know? Maybe it's much more easier for you to live on the countryside and not to live in cities. And uh, so we have to ask this kind of question and discover this kind of problems, what we will face maybe in, in cities, to keep people on the countryside. Could be one idea. Um, then we like to develop maybe three concepts based on this discover needs, together with this kind of countryside people. Three different concepts, of course, related to the scene. And uh, of course, we have to make a presentation every evening here, I think at five o'clock. And so we will discuss this kind of process then, and we will discuss also this kind of concepts. Concept means it's, it's not work out in details. It's just a concept, and uh, please um, try to develop three concepts um, instead to develop one concept and already give answer for all the details. First we need a concept, and then we will discuss with you together, with the group together, the concepts, and then we will decide it together what maybe is the strength and the weakness of the concept, and we decided together with you then um, 
how to continue the process um, to develop then the details of the concept. Of course, there could be could be technical drawings, uh, models, mock-ups. But as well, if you create a service, for example, we have to explain the service, and also the service could be explained by a mock-up. Um, you can use Lego, for example, to explain something like services. Um, sometimes, as the designers have to go back really to the to the age of kids to understand how communicate kids, and uh, Lego is a very nice tool for communication and mock-ups. Uh, also for Designers, we use uh, Lego sometimes as well to develop this kind of communication tool to communicate with our partners, uh, just with Legos or some similar. And then, of course, we like to create kind of poster um, to communicate. Then in the next step uh, to the press, maybe, and as well to the to the politicians, uh, to the people in the country area, and to to communicate our result of the workshop. And hopefully we will find something together what will really support this kind of idea that is a enjoyable life to be farmer, for example, to be old, and as well to stay on countryside. And uh, I think that's the main target for our work the next days, um, to explain to the society that to be farmer is not a, a bad uh, profession. Um, as well as can be very enjoyable and um, maybe this is the idea also to communicate them to other people that will join and move back from the mega cities, from the big cities back to the farm stuff. Um, I developed some um, years ago a process uh, because I, I believe in, in functionality, functionality in the wider events, not in the typical functionality of maybe German design. I think functionality has to be in everything included. Functionality has to be also included in the communication. So that means um, it must be a functional communication, means it's easy to understand what you mean. And uh, of course, um, the functional communication um, could be as well um, in the developing process. And um, the developing process, the functional developing process, is a question of communication. 50% of our products will never reach the market developed in companies. 50% of the products dying in the companies before they reach the market. It's a question of a communication. Uh, of course, a question of management in general, but uh, it's a communication question. Why products dying in the companies before they reach the market? And how much energy, human energy, you put in the developing process over time no weekend, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then suddenly the product disappears in the company, not on the market. So we have to make a functional developing process. And this is a question of designers, not a question of management. We have to design the communication process of the develop developing process. As well, we need the functional production, because in the production, we cannot keep the production to the engineers. The production has to move as well to the design field. Because still in the production we have human beings, we have people working in the production. And we are in charge of the people. The engineer is in charge of technology. The marketing is in charge of the competition. The salespeople is in charge of the selling product. But the, the, the challenge of design is to be able to understand people and the needs of the people and translate it for usable, for example, production processes. <laughs> We have to develop the production process. It's a design issue. It's a totally new field for designers. Of course, packaging. You know, packaging is since 50 years. We have a, a paper box, we have styrofoam, and we have the product. And if you look out now, the big companies like, say, Panasonic or Sony or Samsung, name it, they still have the same packaging as maybe our grandfather had before. So we have to improve the packaging, less packaging. The part of the product has to be the packaging. We have to improve the transportation. 50% of our containers are empty. So we're shipping air from Japan to Europe, and maybe from Europe to Japan. And, uh, but this is a kind of energy. So we have to, in the developing process, we have to understand in which way our product will be transported. First of all, from the factory to the market. 
Um, then we have to understand how our products will be presented in the market, department stores. If you like to buy a refrigerator today in the department store, how is this presented? Japan is a country what presents sometimes very, very nice. If you see fruits, for example, there's no other country in the world presented fruits so nice, but also so expensive. But it's a kind of nice relation because you have the respect for the, this kind of farming goods. There's no country in the world I, I learned so far that is have this kind of respect for goods, for farming goods, to keep it really carefully and packaging very carefully. But as well, we have to think about the functional transportation number two, the, the product from the retail store, maybe retail store to home. Why we threw away our boxes? Apple boxes, 80% of the boxes of Apple are keep, not thrown away. So if you buy a mobile phone, you keep the box collecting something inside, jewelry or something. Or you use it as a, as a toy. This, for example, the packaging for the power book is mainly used for kids. They have a luggage, a small luggage. They can put in toys. They can play something. They play doctor. And I don't know what, whatever they do. And this is an issue of functional use. Of course, this is the main issue of design. But also, we forgot it. If you see all the products you have at home, you cannot use. Every product in our, um, our home has to be so simple to use, like a door handle. Door handle is quite easy to understand. Also, people never saw a door handle. Maybe it's easy to use. You know? They will understand it and say, OK, it's this way you can open a door. But if you see about interfaces, if you think about your technical products, your cameras, and so on, I have so many technical products I don't understand. 70% of our products we have in our home we don't understand. We cannot use. I cannot program a videotape or a CD if my wife is not home. She has to do it. She can do it. I cannot do it. It's too complicated for me. Maybe I'm stupid, but uh, sorry, I don't like to get named stupid from a company that is producing electric products. <laughs> As well, we have to think about a second new. The all products what we develop, products, services, and so on, they have to have a second new. That means they have to be able to recon reconstruct, to keep it as long as possible. And the aging of the product has to be beautiful. Also, this is maybe a philosophy of Japan. You know, if you use natural products, uh, materials, for example, wood or metal, this kind of, of aging of the products gets a kind of, of patina, gets some beautiness of age. This all the, only in Japan, the society of Japan, this kind of respect for age is in Japan, in the society, only in Japan, not in Europe, not in the United States. Aging, old is old, old is bad, but in Japan is old sometimes very, very important, very nice. As well, we have to think about the products we develop in similar way. That we have, uh, we have to develop products that aging beautifully, as more as old, as more nice could be this product. But also, we have to think about the functional transport, in which way we have this kind of garbage collecting, gummy collecting. This is the system of Germany. We have now four different systems. One is normal garbage, then there's paper. Yellow one is electrical goods, and uh, brown is now goods, uh, nature goods, what you can uh, bring back uh, in the nation. So we have to think about what we really create, how we, we bring parts together, how we bring material together. As much as possible, we have to have less materials in our products, in our services, in our society. So if you use steel, then try to use steel as long as possible, and not add plastic and glue it, and so on. And as well, we have to think about the recycling process, um, in which way we have to sign this kind of product to get really 100% recycled. There's no product on the earth at the moment. Developing product, technical product, what is 100% recyclable. But uh, in general, we have to think about how we can uh, develop this kind of product as well. And this is something what maybe we also will come out of the workshop. Sometimes. In the design process, we maybe create that the product not necessary to do. That means the designers have to be able today to develop a design process to show to the companies, to the societies, to the government, say, we don't do it. Sorry, we don't need a new car. We have good cars. We don't need a new one. 
Why to develop again a new car? You know, makes the car more expensive and sell it longer. So we don't have to develop each day, each year, a new product, a new product, a new product, a new product. So we have to, we can stay with this kind of products, maybe. And if we create this kind of process to be able to explain to companies, you save money if you're not making a new product then you can earn by money not to make a product. And this is quite an interesting process. And I try to teach my students not to create products, to create a process to explain to the society that the product is not necessary. And this is maybe a new challenge of design. Thank you very much.